how do we consciously and deliberately change our mindsets? So what is mindset and what sort of purpose does it serve? We define mindsets as core beliefs and assumptions that you make about a domain. So take stress for example, the nature of stress. What's your sort of core belief about that? Do you view stress as enhancing, good for you, or do you view it as debilitating and bad for you? Those mindsets, those core beliefs, orient our thinking. They change what we expect will happen to us when we're stressed, how we explain the occurrences that happen or unfold when we're stressed, and also change our motivation for what we engage in when we're stressed. So we have mindsets about many things. Mindsets about stress, mindsets about intelligence, about food, mindsets about medicine, you name it. It's sort of distilling down those core assumptions that really shape and orient our thinking in action. Mindsets simplify life in some way by constraining the number of things that we have to consider. Right, so do you believe that your baseline levels of intelligence or your abilities are fixed, static, set throughout the rest of your life? Or do you believe that they can grow and change? What are some different mindsets? Many people are familiar with the notion of a growth mindset. That if we are not proficient at something, that we should think about not being proficient yet. And that we are on some path to proficiency. But what are some examples of mindsets? And how early do these get laid down? Or do we learn them from our parents? So, do you believe that your baseline levels or intelligence or your abilities are fixed, static, set throughout the rest of your life? Or do you believe that they can grow and change? If you believe they can grow and change, then you belong to the group of people that have a growth mindset. Now, those are oversimplified generalizations about the nature of intelligence. And the reality is, as it always is, complex. And it's a bit of both, and it's all the things. But as humans, we need these simplifying systems to help us understand the complex reality. So those assumptions that we jump to, oh, intelligence is fixed or intelligence is malleable, they help us to simplify this complex reality, but they're not inconsequential. They matter in shaping our motivation. And it has been shown, if you have the mindset that intelligence is malleable, you're motivated to work harder, to grow your intelligence. If you have a setback in your learning, you think, okay, there's something there that I can grow and learn and build from. If you have the mindset that is fixed, why work harder at math if you don't think you're good at it? So in retrospect, it's pretty clear how these mindsets can affect our motivation. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you get value out of this video. Generally, people, at least in our culture in the West, have this view that stress is debilitating, healthy foods are disgusting and depriving. Those mindsets, whether or not they're true or false, right or wrong, they have an impact. Studies reveal that they also shape physiological mechanisms by changing what our bodies prioritize and prepare to do. So those are just two examples. Mindsets about stress, mindsets about food we've looked at. Now mindsets about exercise. Do you feel like you're getting enough or do you feel like you're getting an insufficient amount to get the health benefits you're seeking? Mindsets about illness. Do you view cancer as an unmitigated catastrophe or do you view cancer as a manageable or perhaps even an opportunity? We've looked at mindsets about symptoms and side effects. Do you view side effects as a sign that the treatment is harmful or do you view side effects as a sign that the treatment is working? Again, these are sort of core beliefs or assumptions you have about these domains or categories. But they matter because they're shaping, they're synthesizing and simplifying the way we're thinking. But they're also shaping what we're paying attention to, what we're motivated to do, and potentially even how our bodies respond. To what degree are these things influenced by our mindsets or beliefs about them? To test this question, a seemingly simple study was set up. This was done at the Yale Center for Clinical Research. People were brought into the lab under the impression that we were designing different milkshakes 
with vastly different metabolic concentrations, nutrients, concentrations that were designed to meet different metabolic needs of the patrons of the hospital. We told them you're going to come in, you're going to taste this milkshakes and we're going to measure your body's physiological response to them. It was the same people consuming two different milkshakes, two different time points separated by a week. And at one time point, they were told they were consuming this high fat, high caloric, indulgent milkshake. It was like 620 calorie, super high fat and sugar. The other time point, they were told that it was a low fat, low calorie, sensible sort of diet shake. In reality, it was the exact same shake. It was right in the middle. It was like 300 calories, moderate amount of fats and sugar. The lab then measured their body's gut peptide response to this shake, and in particular, the hormone ghrelin. So as you might know, medical experts call it the hunger hormone. It rises and signals for you to seek out food, and after the needed amount of calories has been consumed, ghrelin levels drop, signaling to the brain, okay, you don't need to eat so much anymore, you can stop eating, and also revving up the metabolism to burn the nutrients that were just ingested. What was found in this study was that when people thought they were consuming the high fat, high calorie indulgent milkshake, in response to the shake, their ghrelin levels dropped at a threefold rate stronger than when they thought they were consuming the sensible shake. So essentially, their bodies responded as if they had consumed more food, even though it was the exact same shake at both time points. This is really interesting and important as it shows that it has a metabolic or a physiological component. We would think the better mindset to be in when you eat is that you are eating healthy, but that is a far too simplistic way of thinking about it. And in fact, it is the exact opposite. When these participants thought they were eating sensibly, their bodies left them still feeling physiologically hungry, not satisfied which could potentially be corresponding to slower metabolism and so forth. So if you're in the interest of maintaining or losing weight, what's the best mindset to be in? It's to be in a mindset that you're eating indulgently, that you're having enough food, that you're getting enough. And at least in studies, it has been shown that this has more adaptive effect on ghrelin responses. How can your mindset towards stress influence the way you perceive and deal with stress. The public health message on this topic is very clear, right? That stress is bad, unmitigated and harmful on our health, our productivity, our relationships, our fertility, our cognition, you name it. The message is out there. By and large oversimplified messages focused on the damaging consequences of stress. But as you know, if you actually dive deeper into the literature on stress and the origins of stress, what you find is that the literature, like most literatures, is not so clear-cut. And in fact, there's a large amount of evidence to support the fact that the experience of stress, meaning encountering adversity or challenge in one's goal-related efforts, does not have to be debilitating. And in many cases, the body's response is designed to enhance our ability to manage at those moments. Some research shows that stress narrows our focus, increases our attention, speeds up the rate at which we are able to process information. Also there is this phenomenon of physiological toughening, the process by which the release of catabolic hormones and the stress response help to build our muscles, build our neurons, to help grow and learn. It was also revealed that post-traumatic growth, or the phenomenon in which even the experience of the most traumatic stressors, the most chronic and enduring stressors, could lead not to destruction but in fact to the exact opposite, to an enhanced sense of connection with our values, connection to others, sense of joy and passion for living. So one could say that stress can be seen as enhancing and not debilitating. But to question what's the role of our mindset about stress in shaping our response to stress, some research has already been done looking at the perception of the stressor. Do you view a stressor like a challenging exam or a health diagnosis as a challenge 
or a threat, it has been shown pretty convincingly that when you view stressors more as a challenge, less as a threat, that your brain and body responds more adaptively. Let us know if you view stress as something that's bad, is going to kill us and therefore should be avoided, or do you view some stress as natural and something that's going to enhance us? The first step is really simple and that's just to be aware that you have them, that the world, your beliefs aren't sort of an unmitigated reflection of reality as it objectively is. They are filtered through our interpretations, our expectations, our frameworks and simplifications of that reality. The second step is to start to think about what the effects of those mindsets are on your life to sort of play out the story, right? Okay, I have this mindset that stress is debilitating. How is that making me feel? Let us know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed this video.